What makes that baby's bodily autonomy matter more and come as a priority over the woman's bodily autonomy in this situation? It actually doesn't come as a priority. Um, I just think that that baby inherently has the right to life. All right, let's bring him in. It's time. My boy, how you doing? What's up, Xander Hall? Give me one second. Let me adjust a few things. That way you can see me here. Yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm setting up... Uh... Well, I can't set up my camera on your end, I think, because it'll it'll just show gray. But I can I can show your camera, and, and you'll be you'll be on the screen, and everyone will be able to see you, and all of your uh, all of your glory. It'll be fantastic. All right, let's here, see. Let's here. see. Let's 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 get you let's get you up in that. There we let's go. Let's get you up in I'm that up. top right corner there. There you are. Here, let me just uh, let me just do a little little bit of this. Wait, wait, wait. This this might actually oh yeah, there there. we go. We'll do this. There we um, go. There we go. All Man. right. We'll pull your stream over, but my viewers. That way we can see both of us. All right, I think we're good. All right. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Uh, not bad. I'm actually, uh, I have completely moved my setup, actually. Um, well, not completely. I, I, ori I basically had to take everything off my desk, unhook my entire setup, every uh, jumble of wires, every everything that powers my two monitors, my camera, my lights, my computer, my PS4, everything. Had to take it all off my desk, put it on the ground over there, move my desk to this corner, then set everything back up again, and... Um, and I did all that all last night, and I stayed up till 6 a.m. doing it, and now I've got a whole new setup now, which I, I really like. It, it, I'm definitely preferring this to the previous one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so um, how are you doing today? What's what's going on in your life? Uh, Right now I'm trying to figure out my stream. I have you kind of like halfway on my Discord here, but I think it's working. So um, anyways, um, uh, obviously I haven't moved. Uh, I... My, my room is the same old, same old here. Uh, but uh, other than that, I've just been working. Um, so I've got a job outside of this. This is more so a hobby of mine until we can uh, until we can get to... If I can get to a point to where it's not a hobby, that'd be awesome, where I can actually just do this full time. But uh, it, we're, we're not there yet, so... It's a double-edged sword, though, I have to warn. Um, something that I sort of noticed at least for me after becoming a full-time youtuber was that it stopped like when you do it as a hobby or you do it because it's fun and you enjoy it um you don't really care about how like like if you do if, if a stream does badly or a video does badly it's like ah oh, it's gravy right whatever right i mean uh, the next one will do better but if it does well it's great you get rewarded for that it feels good but when it's your full-time job and something does badly, it feels like a punishment, like it's scary, and and streaming feels like work, and and I, it, yeah, it's it it's a double side, it's a double edged sword for sure, it's a double edged sword, but it is still definitely better than having like a normal job. Being able to stream is is a privilege for sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I love streaming, so I'm I'm glad that I've got the followers I do and the viewers I do. Um, like honestly, I don't even care. Like I've told people this like before. Someone came into my chat just now talking about how like I don't have um how I don't have like a good amount of viewers, how I'm, I'm limited on viewers. Uh, but it, it's just funny. I find it funny that people come after me for being limited on viewers. Like, cause first off I've just started this and second off, like I, um, I'm, I'm on a left leaning platform. So I'm already competing against the left, uh, for views and the right really hasn't found their way to Twitch yet. So, um, I, I, I'm inclined to agree a little bit with that. Um, I mean, this isn't like one of our debate topics, but I do want to give my thoughts on it because I've heard I've heard this said a lot. Um, I don't know if I'd go as far as to say Twitch is a left-leaning platform. I think Twitch as a company, and, and certainly Amazon has a front of left-wing politics, right? Like the TOS is certainly, you know, like, you know, more more progressive, right? Like they, they, they definitely aren't fond of super right-leaning people. But Twitch as a community seems to be just pretty centrist right like most of the big streamers and the people who watch streamers on twitch really don't give a fuck or want anything to do with politics but i will admit when it comes to the political side of twitch 
it does seem to be mostly left-leaning people, but I think that has more to do with the type of content that conservatives tend to make and the type of content that left-wing people tend to make. Like left-wing, like conservative people usually make on YouTube at least, like um, like either they have their own like show on their own website, like Blaze TV or something, or they make videos like the quartering. They like they do like four videos a day. They're like somewhat scripted and prepared with some editing about a certain topic. Um, well, it seems like streaming uh, political stuff is sort of become more of a left-wing niche due to destiny kind of ins inspiring that yeah yeah and so like it's I, I i know i'm up against the grain um but i'm willing to be up against the grain uh i i think that i present myself well in panels and in debates and uh whether or not people if people disagree with me they're free to uh they're free to show me by not watching or not not following or whatever they want to do but i feel like i present myself well as a member of the right wing and um uh, yeah that's i'm just here to be the the voice of the right wing since either i, f I feel like on twitch either you have like crazy right wingers and, or uh you have like center right you, you, you don't actually have like a true like you, there's a lack of true right wingers on twitch um you either get crazy or you get center right from what i've seen yeah, yeah. There's a lot of um, like weird conspiracy theory shit on on Twitch a little bit, but most you are right about there not being any like huge openly right wing figures. If I were to guess, I'd say there's plenty of big streamers that probably are conservative, but they just don't talk about it. If you're if you're a big streamer, um, I I remember a time back in the day when I watched a lot of YouTube. The number one rule of being a YouTuber was you just don't talk politics because you're ostracizing half your audience at least if you do that. Um, but now there's a whole niche of content on YouTube and on Twitch now. It's all about talking about politics and all about constantly being in the in the crossfire of of political heated debate all the time, which is um, a big change when I was younger and I just watched YouTube, you know. But um, hey, do you want to give your intros? Because, uh, um, you know, people might stumble across this and uh, maybe they'll come check you out. Yeah. So uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash the and uh, twitter.com slash the um, I'm a constitutionalist conservative. I often do panels or debates like this one, um, but I'm trying to do a little bit more um, like self-hosted shows to where I, I just talk to the chat and uh, we go over some news and we talk about the news and what's going on in the world. Um, but yeah, if you like my views in this upcoming debate, uh, feel free to come give me a follow. Um, or if you hate my views, feel free to come give me a follow. And uh, if you hate my views and you really hate my views, uh, feel free to come give me a subscription because it helps me. It helps. It helps me do my channel, and uh, you'll get to hate me for longer. So feel free to come give me a subscription if you hate me. That's true. Dislikes boost and boost you in the algorithm. A lot of people don't know that. Um, some of my best performing videos are ones where people came and mass disliked it, and it just got. I got tons of views and made tons of money and did really well, and I gained tons of subscribers. It's like. I, I think I respond. I like did a video talking about Scott Cawthon, and I got like a bunch of Five Nights at Freddy's fans mass disliking my video, and I gained like a thousand subs just from that video because so many people boosted in the algorithm. Hate helps. Any type of attention is positive attention. That's something Trump had right. He knew. He knew that att any attention is good attention. Doesn't matter. Um, all publicity is good publicity. Um, but yeah, so uh, we were gonna debate the topic of abortion and uh, LGBT rights, right? Yeah, yep. I think those are the two topics that were that were selected. I think All I right, gave cool. you like four you... topics, and those are the two that were we finalized. So. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um. So, do you want to start with abortion or LGBT stuff? Um. What, what's uh, up to you? I guess. We can start with abortion if you'd like to. All right. Um. Do you want to give your statement first, or do you want me to go first? Uh. What's your What do you want to do? Um. It that's that's completely up to you. If you'd like to go first, go ahead. If you don't want to go first, I can go first. All right, I can go first. So um, I don't know what your position is on abortion. I know you're probably pro-life. I know you're probably not a big fan of it. Um, but I don't know your reasoning for why you're pro-life. So I'm, I'm excited to see um, what some of your arguments are. But I am aware of some pretty common conservative arguments for, uh, you know, being pro-life and why abortion is bad. A pretty common one tends to be about whether or not it is murder. Are you killing a living being um, by getting an abortion? Is it, is it immoral? Are you committing a murder? Or um, should it be illegal for some practical reason? Um, I've accounted for basically every conservative position that I can think of, and I've yet to find one convincing 
um, that that can convince me that abortion ought to be criminalized or not allowed by law. Um, so what's what's your position on it? My position, uh, I, I'm pro life. Um, I, I don't think that abortion should be allowed. Um, allowed. I think there are three exceptions to this rule, though. Like I said, um, like oftentimes there's a rule, but there's always exceptions to the rule. Um, but first, we have to make the rule, then we can make the exceptions. So the rule should be that abortion should not be allowed. Uh, the exceptions, therefore, should be um, in the cases of incest, rape, or, uh, or a danger to the mother's health. Um, I do not think that abortion should be treated as some kind of uh, contraceptive. I think that um, when you treat abortion as a contraceptive, uh, you lose the meaning of life that that baby had. Um, and the baby does have a life. Um, if that baby is brought full to term, it's obvious that this, this baby would have a life. Um, and I, I don't think that it's, I don't think it's okay by any means to kill the baby off because, um, you just decided that you didn't want to have sex and you didn't want to participate in that. Um, and you realize the repercussions of your actions and therefore now you no longer want the baby. So you think it's somewhat okay to okay to kill it. Okay, so this is what I'm curious about. Two of the exceptions that you listed where you think it would be okay to have an abortion are rape or incest. And my question is, in your worldview, what about a child being conceived from rape or incest makes it okay for that woman to now get an abortion? So my true views, and this, this, is, this, this is where you're going to push me, so it's fine. Uh, my true views, personally, is that um, abortion should not be there at all. But I think the first step to getting there is to allow these exceptions. Um, and I think, that's, I think that's an important first step that we need to take uh, because you're not going to jump from point A and get all the way to point Z in one step. Um, I think that the important exception is that we add in these exceptions to begin with. Um, we start to get on the right side of morality instead of the wrong side of morality. Um, and we push further and further until, uh, until babies aren't being murdered anymore. So, okay. So do you believe that abortion is, I assume you believe abortion is murder, right? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. So you believe that like a, at, where do you believe that life begins, uh, for a child? I believe like, that life begins at conception. Okay, that's fine, because my arguments have absolutely nothing to do with um, the argument as to whether or not it's a life. Um, I think there, I'm pretty sure there are entire sectors of the of the field of philosophy that have been started over the debate as to whether, as to where life begins and ends, right? From, does the life, does life end when your heart stops beating? Or does your life end when, the, when brain activity stops? Does your life begin when when the, the sperm cells are produced by the father in the nut sack or when the egg is produced or when they combine is that it doesn't matter um no one will ever come to agreement on when life begins so my position actually is going to concede that a newly fertilized egg is just is already a life let's say it already is a life my argument has nothing to do with that because it's a very esoteric complicated philosophical discussion that'll go on for a million years and uh, we'll never come to agreement on anything and it'll just be annoying and everyone will leave and be like god damn it i don't want to be here for this well to be honest if we, had, if we had that debate, debate if we had the debate whether uh, life starts at conception or at birth um i think that we would both fundamentally disagree at the very fundamental um and we would never be able to move past the fundamentals yeah and it would and, and our debate would go nowhere but i'm going to concede that um uh, that a life that life begins at conception, let's say, right? Hell, life can even begin whenever you you shoot the nut out your dick, right? Uh, doesn't really matter for this for this argument. I'm gonna give a bit of a comparison. Uh, it's it's used a lot by lefties nowadays. I don't know if you've heard this argument. Maybe you have. Um, let's make a, a hypothetical, okay? Let's say you get into a drunk driving accident. You decide to get behind the wheel while you were drunk. And you got into your car, you started driving home from the bar. Wasted as hell. You knew there was danger to driving. You should not have been driving. And you get into a car accident. And you get into a car accident with another dude, right? Mm -hmm. And that dude came out of the car accident in some pr in really rough shape. And you wake up in the hospital now having been basically turned into a living blood bag for this person. They've hooked you up, and your body is now producing blood for that person. And the doctor tells you, well, 
you, you were j there at the time. The person was losing too much blood. We had to hook you up. You were doing fine. You were just knocked out. Um, and if we take him off uh, of, of your blood, he's going to die. Um, you know, you're, you're he's going to die. So you, you now are giving him blood. Now, obviously, in real life, this is illegal because we would never do this. Doctors aren't allowed to do this. The law can't force you to do this. But you are now in a position where you are providing your bodily autonomy has been has been uh, uh, walked all over. You, you've lost your bodily autonomy in your sleep. You've been connected up to this person and your nutrients, your blood is the only thing keeping them alive. Is it immoral to unhook yourself from this person, to allow them to die? And does the government or the hospital have the right to force you to stay there? Because by your logic, depriving that this person of that blood that they need to survive from your body you're allowing them to die, much like if uh, if you have a miscarriage and you're a mother, or if you get an abortion, you without you the baby would die. So I don't think miscarriages are murder. Um, I, I, in no way, in no way do I think miscarriages um, should be considered abortions. Well, what about um, intentional miscarriages, like where you starve yourself and you make yourself uh, uh, malnourished and you have a purposeful abortion? Or, That's or a different story. Um, but that also, that also involves intent, right? That, that involves um, intent. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think when you intentionally abort a baby, it is murder. Um, unintentional would be a miscarriage by not, with no intention of miscarrying the baby. Um, as a lot of women experience in their lives, they'll experience a miscarriage and the baby will die as a fetus. Um, what the dog doing? With no help of the mother, the mother didn't adjust the... Um, didn't adjust, like, the situation to make it less lively for the baby. But in your situation, where you're talking about this person being, uh, being, like, giving his blood to this person, and if he disconnected himself, the person would die, I think at that, I think at that point in time, the person has, um, two options, right? So this person has the option to, um, keep, stay connected to this person, let's, let's just call it nine months. Right. Let's say mm -hmm. let's say a doctor say in nine months this person will be healthy and you can disconnect and um, there won't be a there won't be any. Um, basically, this person is going to be stabilized and we're not going to need your blood anymore just for the argument. Right. Um, then this person has two options. Either stay connected to this person for nine months or disconnect this person and be put be put in jail for at minimum at minimum male at the I can't even say it. at minimum uh I can't even, manslaughter. manslaughter at minimum manslaughter and at max murder. Um, so if this person were to disconnect from this person in this situation, they would get at minimum manslaughter and at maximum murder, um, which you often see anyways. Um, you see when a drunk drive when a drunk driving accident happens. You see that the drunk driver, if they kill somebody, they get manslaughter right off the bat. Manslaughter is a charge against them, and they oftentimes get convicted if they're caught drunk driving and kill somebody. I mean, this is yeah, uncommon that's... for you to see manslaughter. Yeah, so that's a legal consequence of your actions, but do you think a legal consequence of your actions should be that you were forced to, for nine months, act as a living blood bag sitting in a hospital all day, hooked up to a person to keep them from dying? And do you think unhooking yourself from that person would be murder? I think that this this point goes to it goes to a certain idea that like so this person would have been charged with manslaughter had this person not helped the other person out. With that being said, um, I think that if they do disconnect, it's manslaughter, and they have the that now medically have the option for them not to go to jail for manslaughter and to well, in a, in a assist philosophical... this person in living for nine months. In a philosophical discussion, is manslaughter unintentionally killing someone? Because philosophy doesn't view a difference between murder and manslaughter. It's, it's, it's you either murdered somebody or you killed somebody in a in a context that could be permissible, such as self defense. Usually, when we talk about a topic like this in 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 philosophy, so are you using like a legal basis, or are we debating like the philosophical idea? Like, is it wrong to do this? Yes, I think that if you were drunk driving and you put someone in that position, it would be wrong to disconnect from that person because they're the only person keeping them alive. And it was your choices, your actions that put that person there. Damn. Wait, are you a libertarian? No, I'm a constitutionalist conservative. 
Okay, yeah, I, I was about to say, because like, I, I, you were advocating for the uh, death penalty last time we talked on the Hippy Dippy Royale, and I was like, wait, hold on, I hope Spartacus doesn't call himself a, a libertarian. So you believe that if you do something that puts another person's life in danger, you now have lost the right, intent, unintentionally even, like you didn't mean to do it, um, then you've now forfeited your right to bodily autonomy? So there's a difference between unintentional and intentional, right? So this person um, took the risk of drunk driving. They took the mm -hmm. risk of being out there and being out there on the road, being drunk. Um, they then about took someone's life. Um, they didn't because of 21st century medical um, procedures, which you can see nowadays. And when you take a look at that, you just, you, you see that this person now has the option to either kill this person or to, um, excuse me, stay connected to this person for nine months and they'll be fine. If that person was brain dead, I would consider them already dead. Um, so that's kind of outside the question. But yeah, I, I think that if you have the ability to stay connected to this person, it was your fault. You either, uh, you're either at fault for the death or you can help this person get back to uh, life. Interesting. Most people wouldn't uh, bite the bullet on that. Um, now, I have, a, I have a comparison that's a little closer to that of sex, right? Because most of the time, you know, people have sex, condoms break, contraceptives sometimes fail, um, birth control doesn't always work, condoms don't always work, the pull-out method doesn't always work. Um, so here's a more, com I think, comparable situation. I'm curious what your answer to this is going to be. So, let's say you go out driving and you are not drunk. There's always a risk when you go out driving, just like there's always a risk when you have sex. You could wear a condom, your girlfriend could be, or wife could be on, on, on birth control, you could pull out even. There's plenty of things you could do, and it could still fail. Just like there's a risk in driving and having sex, you could get someone pregnant, right? You go out driving, and you're driving down the highway, and you're pulling off or something off of like a, a exit or something, and someone else is in front of you, and you try to slow down, but your brakes don't work. Out of no fault of your own, your brakes don't work. You don't know why. And now you've rear-ended the person in front of you real bad. And they've just careened into, like, a wall on the side of the freeway. And sure enough, just like in the previous situation, you wake up, and now you are hooked up to that person. You did not mean or do anything wrong that got you both in that situation. But now, without your blood for the next nine months, the other person from that car is going to die. If you unhook them, you will. Die. they will die and you'll be able to walk along and have to deal with it, is it immoral, and should it be illegal? Is it murder for them to disconnect themselves from that person now? See, now we're moving into a more complicated version of this argument. We're moving into a version of this argument into where this person had no idea that this could happen, um, didn't foresee it happening, um, et cetera, and so on. The no, there's always a risk of getting in, into an accident when you drive, no matter how good of a driver you are. Okay, right. but there's 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 not a risk. There's not always a risk of killing someone while you're in an accident. Um, if you're a good driver and you can, you don't see this with good drivers. Like you, with good drivers, you don't see. Um, there's man always spotter. a risk of dying in a car accident. Absolutely, there's a risk of well, dying in a car accident. Illegal. Yes, of course, because well, people drive carelessly. Sh sure, that's why they teach you defensive driving when you're in driving school, because you should assume that everybody else in the road has no idea how to drive. There's a reason why that's a rule. Everybody, when they're taught how to drive, is taught that drive like nobody else knows how to, right? right. Especially because if you're on a motorcycle. driving is dangerous. Motorcycling's dangerous too, yeah. Um, driving is dangerous. You gotta be careful. Um, you could die. In this situation, the reason why it's comparable is most people, when they have sex and if they and they later get pregnant and have an abortion, did not mean to get pregnant. It's not like drunk driving where you very well know what you're doing is extremely, extremely risky. Um, having protected sex that, where the condom breaks or you pull out or you do something, have some contraceptive to try to keep from getting pregnant, um, or even having unprotected sex, um, but but like trusting the guy to, to pull out in time. Uh, you're not trying to get pregnant, just like when you're driving and the, the brakes don't work, you're not trying to get into a car accident. Does that mean that that person who wakes up in the hospital hooked up to the other guy, does that mean they are morally obliged to sit there for nine months in a hospital and provide that person with their blood? 
I would argue no, but I would also argue that these two aren't necessarily comparable. It's not a one-to-one. Um, when you have sex, whether you have contraceptives or not, um, you know there's always a risk that you will get pregnant. Uh, there, There is that risk. Um, whether you like it or not, um, there is one way to make sure that you don't get pregnant, though, and that's to abstain from having sex. Um, there's also other things you can do besides abstaining from having sex, like using other loopholes um, in which the proper bodily autonomy doesn't go into the opposite proper bodily autonomy. Um, so with that being said, I, I think that when you decide to do that, when you decide to take that action, you are um, accepting that risk. Um, you're accepting the you're accepting the risk, however small it may be, that you will get pregnant or that you will um, or yeah, that you will get pregnant. Um, you're accepting that risk. Yeah, well, the same thing can be said about uh, about driving, or right? Like, you, you could just not drive. Of course, many people live in situations where driving is not an option. I don't know where you live, but, like, when I lived out in, in Florida, you know, I lived in, uh, in Kona country, okay? I lived out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there was no public transit. Everything was so far away from each other. No way you could bike or walk. You had to drive. Um, but besides situations like that, the same can be said for not driving. Just don't drive. You got into a car accident. You should have known this was coming because you decide to get into a car and drive. This is always a risk. Um, but I guess you could say that the um, the alternative, like riding a bike or walking, uh, which in itself could also be dangerous, is uh, is like gay sex, right? Gay sex can't get you pregnant, right? That, that's the solution here, I think. Um, yeah, gay anal sex works. Lesbian sex works. I mean, anal sex works if you're of the same... Of, of, if you're in a uh, if you're in a male and female relationship as well, I mean you're not. Yeah, you're I forgot not about that. That's true. Sex. Hey, that's true too. Too bad I'm not into anal, sadly. Uh, not receiving or giving, actually. Um, so here, the reason why I make that comparison is that a lot of people, when I argue with conservatives and use this particular argument, the way that they tend to go is saying that when you get preg or when you get pregnant because you had sex, you knew the risk going in. There was always a reasonable possibility that you could get pregnant. Now, there are other situations that I could bring up, tons of hypotheticals we could go through, and I'd like to if you were down to go through them because I'm very curious. Um, this is a, an interesting topic. I mean, um, I'd like to I'd like to ask you a hypothetical um, sure. after after you're done with this, just done with this um, talking point. But you're good. Go ahead. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. So the reason why I bring it up is because there's a very good comparison in the risk, right? When you go out to drive, there's a risk you could get into a car accident. It could be your fault because you make a mistake. We're human. We make mistakes. Um, hell, even the, the self-driving cars make mistakes. And they think that, like, I think recently one thought that the sun was, a, like, a, a self-driving Tesla thought the sun was a yellow light. Um, mistakes happen. Robots make them. Humans make them, too. There's always that risk on both sides of things. Could be another driver. Could be you. Just like if you're having sex with somebody... Maybe your your boy your boyfriend doesn't pull out in time. Maybe the girl uh, uh, accidentally locks her legs at a time when it would not be a good idea to lock her legs, you know. And and you're not able to pull out in time. Maybe the condom breaks. Contra contra contraceptives don't always work. Um, no matter how much precaution you take, there's always that risk. But I don't think it is reasonable, pragmatically or morally, to say, well, then just don't drive, just don't have sex, because. Sex is fun. People like having sex. People like driving. Sometimes you need to drive. It really isn't a reasonable expectation of people to expect them to remain abstinent. There's a reason why everybody knows abstinence doesn't really work. You don't teach abstinence to high schoolers. You teach them how to use condoms and birth control because that's what actually works in preventing pregnancies. People what are going to have doing? sex. And if we're talking about whether or not abortion should be legal or not, um, we haven't even gotten to the practicality of making it illegal. Um, cause you know, I'm a lefty, I'm not a lib, I'm in favor of guns, for example, very common talking point with guns is, you can make guns illegal, you're not gonna get rid of guns. They're gonna be out there, there's gonna be plenty of guns out there, there's gonna be lots of guns out there. Good guns, too, big, fun guns, love guns. Um, right. same will go with abortions, cause abortions aren't even a physical thing the government can take away from you, they're just a, you just get the old coat hanger in the back alley, you know? They, um, they can so make they, the act illegal, right? Well, of course, but making an act illegal doesn't prevent it. If people want to do a thing, they're going to do it anyway. Right. If it people want to own guns, they're going to own it guns. Make it illegal, right? It sure. Does, they're just you're just putting it. You're just making it so when people do do it, they're doing it in a dangerous way. Would you rather that uh, if a woman got an abortion, she did it safely in a clinic with sterilized equipment and doctors, or would you have it rather be in a van in a back alley or in a shed with a coat hanger? 
I mean, I can make the I can make the same argument. I, I can make the same argument with um, murder, which is currently illegal. That um, if you're going to commit murder, would you rather have someone die peacefully, um, where they take them to a doctor and the doctor can just kill this person for them, or would you rather have this person uh, stabbed to death? Like, I I can ask that same idea with something else that's already illegal. Wait, but unironically, even though I don't think that's entirely comparable, let's say that is comparable. Wouldn't you actually rather that um? When people were killed, they were killed by a doctor giving them like a peaceful lethal injection rather than being stabbed to death. No, I Even actually, I, I actually people? wouldn't because I think that I think that it being illegal actually um, actually stops murders from happening. I, I don't think that uh, I I, th I don't think that murders would happen at the same rate. I think it'd be higher if you could just take a person to a doctor and being like, yeah, get rid of this person. Okay. Um, most doctors and, and, and professionals in these fields tend to agree that um, decriminalizing things like, uh, I think drugs are a pretty good example in this scenario. A um, lot of, lot of like, uh, criminal justice experts and doctors and whatnot um, agree that decriminalizing drugs would be a very good idea. Implementing safe injection zones would be a good idea because a lot of these things that we currently criminalize, they're still being done. People are doing drugs all over the country. It's just that they're illegal and they're doing it in places and in ways that are very dangerous. And um, yeah, I've had I, this I conversation think that... on drugs. We just had a, I had a Hans panel not too long ago about drugs and uh, d drugs is one of the shaky points in um, in my political spectrum. I'm not fully decided on what to do with the drugs. I'm actually brought a lot closer to the left on what when it comes to drugs based off of the statistics that I've seen based off the facts that I've seen. Um, I think that I'm a lot closer to the left um, than the right when it comes to drugs. So I mean, okay. drugs you so, have me on, but it's it's that's not that's not also man. I don't think it's a one to one with abortion. Um, it's certainly not a one to one, but there's some parallels worth drawing. the The main argument that it always comes down to is what makes the life and bodily autonomy of the baby inside of a woman who needs the woman's you know uh, placenta and umbilical cord and blood and all the nutrients to survive to develop. What makes that baby's bodily autonomy matter more and come as a priority over the woman's bodily autonomy in this situation? It actually doesn't come as a priority. Um, I just think that that baby inherently has the right to life. Um, as, as written, um, it's, I know it's not law, but it's commonly, it's commonly um, not written law at least, but it's commonly um, put throughout the constitution in different ways, but the declaration of independence, it was said that the, we have the natural rights um, to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, and so what you're doing is you're going against that natural right of the baby to life. Um, and if you decide to get an abortion, you're going against their natural rights. Um, well, we, we but like I, but okay like, I said, like I said before, if it goes against the mother's health, like the mother's health is endangered by taking this taking this baby to a full term, then I agree that there can be a medical procedure done in which um, it saves the mother's life, but unfortunately ends the baby's life. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's not I held think, at a higher priority than the mother's. Yeah, most pro life people tend to agree that, like in cases like that, it would probably be okay to terminate the pregnancy, or if it's later on, just induce birth um, if that's an option, because. They don't, they don't, there's no doctor that'll perform like a late term abortion. At that point, you would just, like, there's a certain point where it's like, no, that you don't, you can't get an abortion. You just induce, like, birth at this point. Um, I mean, we had the but, governor uh, of Virginia arguing for leaving babies to die of abandonment after they were born. Do you have a source for that? Uh, yeah. Give me one second. Because that sounds bizarre. I'm curious in that one. The governor of Virginia? Yes. Leaving babies to die. Of abandonment. That's interesting. A lot of people in my chat are spamming that's not true. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I'm interested in this one. I want to see the sauce. Let's see. Uh, Virginia abortion feud erupts. Governor blasted for comments. Um, let's see. I, I, it would take me a second to find it. I didn't necessarily have this on hand. Reuters um, did a fact check on this. Virginia governor's 2019 comments about abortion bill are missing context. A meme shared by over 70,000 people on Facebook misrepresents comments made by Virginia Governor Ralph Northam in 2019 when he was asked about a bill that, among other things, aimed to erase restrictions for third trimester abortions in the state. The meme falsely suggests that Northam is in favor of legalizing infanticide by leaving out some key contextual references in his remarks. The meme here, uh, I guess here's an image of it. Here, we can... 
Oh wait, I have to log into Facebook for that. God knows. Oh, here, 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 here's here's the exact quote. I had the exact quote for CBS News. Um, All right. So the exact quote from Governor uh, Northam is when we talk about third trimester abortions, these are done with the consent of obviously the mother and the consent of physicians, more than one physician, by the way. And it's done in cases where there uh, where there may be severe deformities, there may be a fe fetus that's non viable. So in this particular example, if mothers in labor, I can tell you exactly what would happen. That infant would be delivered, the infant would be kept comfortable, the infant would be resuscitated if that's what the mother and the family desired, and then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So I think this is really blown out of proportion. Yeah, yeah. It, there's a tendency, it seems, for for quotes like this to be uh, exacerbated. But yeah, that's why it's important. To look into these things. Anytime I hear a claim like that, I always, I always look into it because lefty, lefty Twitter does this too. Like a, I'll see a headline that gets retweeted and quote tweeted everywhere and, and I'll believe it. And then it turns out it's not true. Um, yeah. So clear that governor probably has no idea what he's talking about, but it clearly wasn't like just leave the babies out to die you know, of abandonment, you know? Um, I mean, he talks about no. the infant would deliver, the infant would be kept comfortable, and then the infant would be resuscitated. That's what the mother and fam family desired. So uh, regarding yeah, the, in the case the infant you... would be resuscitated, that means the infant has already died. Yeah, yeah. See, it, it wasn't like, or not, in the case of a non-viable infant, like one where it's like, yeah, I mean, we can resuscitate it, but it's going to die in a few days, maybe a week. Because there's a lot of cases where that happens, where like a baby is born, and the doctors are like, yeah... This baby's going to die soon. Okay. Yeah, that happens, right? So, I mean, th of course. Um, so, but he he goes in before in that quote, he says, and it's done in cases where there may be severe deformities and there may be a fetus that's not viable. Um, and so what you're talking about is a fetus that is not viable. Um, what I'm referring to is a, um, s a severe deformity, which wasn't necessarily um, described by this governor. Um, but the governor did suggest that a baby with a severe deformity, um, which I'm very, very cautious when that, that term is not described or given any extra, um, like precautions around it. Um, but he talks about babies with severe deformity having this as well. Yeah. It seems like from the quote, at least the way I interpret it is that he was talking about babies that weren't going to live anyway, or that were born already like dead and, and, or, or in a state where they were dying and it's he, like okay he makes we can a distinction it. between non-viable and severe deformities though so i would argue that he is also talking about babies that have severe deformities that are viable um i mean maybe i guess if you want to interpret the quote that way uh, my main problem is the way that you you characterize that quote and the reason why i looked it up is because it came off as like the this virginia governor is is pushing this pro-abortion pro-baby killing just leave them out in the mud to die uh kind of narrative and that's the thing that I took issue with. Um, do you want to go back to like the original philosophical um, yeah, we can go back debate? to the original philosophical debate, but I'd like to offer you a hypothetical of sorts sure. if you did, if you'd like, if you oh, yeah. would uh, entertain the idea. Um, but so let's say that there's a mom and there's a dad, right? So typically how it goes is the mom is the one that has the baby. And so the mom's the one that decides if that gets an abortion or not. Mm -hmm. The father in I want to say all states. But I don't, Wait, can I, can I, don't I, can I interject states? just really quick to say I know what you're going to say, and I probably agree with you on it. Um, okay. Good agree. I probably agree with you on it. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I, I don't think the father has a right to disagree with the mother in all states. Um, I don't live in all states, so I could be wrong on a couple different states. I know definitely in the state of Indiana that the father does not get a choice when it comes to abortion. Um, but with that being said, if the father decides they don't want the kid and the mom decides they do want the kid, can the father just decline to stop paying for the kid to d denounce himself from the kid? No child support, uh, no support from the father whatsoever. The father just gets to go freely live his life. I mean, cause I feel like if you're going to be pro life, then you should be pro the father just leaving the situation as well. Yeah. So this is, um, this is actually somewhere where I sort of agree. Not necessarily agree with pro-life people, but I, I I give some credence to this argument because it would be an absolutely shitty situation to be in, and I can't imagine myself being in that situation and not feeling some empathy for the father in that situation. So, so the example you're bringing up is you've got a, a dad or a guy who's gotten his girlfriend pregnant, right? And now the girlfriend's pregnant, and he's going to be a dad, and um, the dad does not want to have the kid, but the mother does, right? Um yeah. So should the father 
have to legally care for that child, pay child support, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, practically, probably yes. In most cases, yeah, I mean, it's your sperm. You took part in the action of creating the child. But in the same way, you wouldn't you wouldn't say that if the woman wanted to have an abortion and the and the dad didn't, that you'd want to um, that the dad should have a say in whether or not that was the case if you're pro life or, or, or pro choice, right? Right. Um, but at the same time, um, there there was like a case. Fuck. Um, let me see if I can remember the details. There was a case where a lady stole a guy's cum. And then inseminated herself with it without his knowledge. And then they did a DNA test and he was forced to pay child support for the child because she stole his cum and got herself pregnant with it. And there are cases like that. There are cases that it's rare, but stuff like that can happen. And I feel like maybe it's worth there being some kind of um, exception in the law in in situations like that where you can prove like, uh, I, I, I... no, I didn't consent to this. I didn't, I didn't consent to that. That was my cum was stolen. She was a cum jacker. She she took it. Um, yeah, I think the the main issue, like in a pract in practicality, you would want to have a discussion prior to sex about like safety. Like at least for me, um, I'm pretty fucking careful, right? And I think that's part of like the whole discussion is you need to. Um, teach people about proper con- like contraceptives and how not to get pregnant if you don't want to. Um, but no, it is an interesting hypothetical. And my side of things would usually lie, like if we're talking about whether or not the abortion should be had, it should probably be the mother's choice because she is the one that has to carry the child to term for nine months. Um, the-, the father can usually duck most of the responsibility outside of like child uh, payments or um, what's it called? Al- al- not alimony, that's marriage. Child support. Um, child support payments, yeah. Um, but besides that, they can mostly duck the responsibility, right, for the most part. Um, but uh, no, I'd usually side with, like, the mother in that situation. I just feel like if you're going to be consistent and you're going to say that these uh, the, the repercussions of our actions uh, don't need to be dealt with, um, when it comes to sex, because you, you there is you had contraceptives, you did think you're gonna have a baby. Um, I mean, th- these are the arguments you're making. If that was the case, then the father would be just as not liable as the mother. Um, the father would would be able to say, yeah, that I I didn't mean for this to happen, and I I don't want the kid. The mom does. So if the mom wants to raise the kid by herself, feel free. Um, but I am not I'm not uh financially tied to this kid. I, I I actually don't want the kid whatsoever. So if the mom wants to raise the kid all by herself and uh, take care of it financially all by herself, then let her. But I don't want anything to do with it. So the problem with this argument is that um, pro-life and pro-choice people can't be consistent on it and for good outcomes to occur. Um, if you're pro-choice and you think it should be all up to the mom— uh, it's it's gonna suck because there are gonna be cases like the dude who ha- who was cum jacked, and if you're pro uh or did I say I uh, pro choice sorry, and if you're pro life, then you're gonna have situations where the woman wants to have an abortion, the dad doesn't, or where the dad doesn't want to support that, or or whatever. You can't win either side if you're if you're um consistent, which is why I think there's probably a bit of nuance there. The thing that I wanted to bring up, yes, cum jacked. I said cum jack. Keep laughing, chat. Um. The the uh, the thing that I wanted to bring up is the fact that um, so there is no easy solution to this question because this is a philosophical argument at the end of the day. In practicality, I think we should sort of take a bit of both arguments. Um, so if you are in favor of the father being able to just duck out and be like, nah, I, I didn't want to have a kid. Fuck that. I'm out of here, right? Um, and you want them to be able to go away and not have to pay child support. You would also need to be in favor of policies that would help um, make up for those payments for mo- a mother, right? Like, I assume you're not in favor of there being shit tons of single mothers out there who are forced to raise their kids alone and those children being brought up in shitty environments because they only have one, uh, at maybe just one income earning parent. Well, um, this, is, this is where it gets easy for me. I'm not in favor of that. I'm not in favor of that at all. What I am in favor of is the babies have a right to life and that right to life to be preserved. Well, 
that we're talking about if the baby is born. I know. I was. I, I'm. A, I'm asking. I'm asking if you're being consistent, and and would agree that the father has no financial liability to help this child. Um, the pro- The problem is the reason why we say that that the father does have financial liability is for practical reasons legally, um, like morally. I would say they probably do, but legally, the reason they do is because the outcomes of not having the father take some financial liability would be monstrous. We don't want more single mothers raising children in this country. That would be awful. And I think the outcomes of abortion are monstrous. I think the outcomes of uh, moms just deciding that their baby doesn't need the right to life um, and that their right to comfort um, comes and it comes above their right to life is a monstrous idea. I think that that would apply as well. When you got your license, did you say yes to being an or- organ donor? Yes, I did. Cool. That's that's a very good thing. I uh, I think I said I don't have my license yet. I have a learner's permit. I don't think they asked me when I did that. How how would you feel if the government then decided to just start taking your organs, even if you said no when you die? Just yeah, sorry, we're gonna take some of your organs out. You know, yeah, just gonna you can take those organs. We need them. I like collecting my organs. Um, would you think that would be okay for the government to start extracting dead people's organs without their permission? No, I feel like that's desecrating the dead, but... Yeah, we assign some moral wrong to even going against the, uh, bodily autonomy and the desires of people who are dead. At that point, it's not even discomfort, it's just, this person said they didn't want this thing done to them before they died, and now even though they're dead, and as far as we're scientifically aware, they can't feel anything, they they have, unless you believe in heaven and hell, but even if there is a heaven, I imagine, uh, you know, if, if they're in heaven or hell, they're not gonna care about their organs being taken, and yet, as a society, we all agree that, um it's probably not good to do that, right? And I think this is comparable to the case of a woman who's pregnant. Why is it wrong to take away the organs of a dead person who will have no ability to feel the the um, the the consequences of that, uh, but we st- think it's okay to take away at least nine months of the bodily autonomy of a pregnant mother who does not want to be pregnant and does not want to have this child? here's the thing right so she's alive when when somebody when somebody dies they've clearly said what whether or not if they have a license they clearly said whether or not they um they want the t- their organs to be donated um following the fact of their death um and I, I i believe that desecration of the dead is i mean I, i'm a christian so i i, I don't i don't really want to mention that in that argument this argument because i feel like it me mentioning religion brings up a whole lot of it just discredits a lot of what i'm saying um, so I, I was just trying to bring that up for the desecration of the dead. That's just why I believe that it's, it, it's incorrect for desecration of the dead. Um, but for the mom, the mom knew that was, the mom knew the risks. The mom knew the risk going into it. Um, if you read the birth control, um, if you read the birth control box, it does not say it's hundred percent effective. Um, if you read condom boxes, it does not say it's hundred percent effective. If you read, uh, plan B pills, it doesn't say it's hundred percent effective. Um, so you knew the risk before you went into it, before you decided to take this action and you took the action anyways. And, uh, you, you get to deal with the, uh, the consequences of your actions, whether they be good or bad. I see having a child is a good thing. Um, I think having children is definitely a good thing. Um, but some people may see as a bad thing in certain points of their life, which I can understand. Um, but again, you're, you're required to keep this baby until nine months. Um, then you can send them for adoption. You can surrender them to, as a war state. Uh, you can give this baby over to the father. Um, there's plenty of other things you can do in which you wouldn't have to raise this kid until you're 18 years old or until they're 18 years old. Well, it's not even just having to raise the kid. I'd argue that's probably, maybe that's difficult, but at least when it comes to your physical bodily autonomy, once you get birth to the kid, I mean, unless you don't want the kid sucking on your nipple to, to feed, there's formula and stuff you can go from that. The real argument is the carrying of the pregnancy. Also, I do want to point out, first-year drivers are statistically more likely to get in an accident than condoms are to break or fail during sex, statistically speaking. So you would uh, you could make the argument that a um, that a, like a, a driver who just got their license is is going into driving with a higher likelihood of fuck. Maybe someone's going to harvest my organs without my permission. Practically, that probably won't happen, but. That risk in this hypothetical really would be there as well. Though. You can't really make that argument. But you know going in that could happen. Because, like if you have because sex. Our, our first year drivers more liable, uh, the percentage wise for, for statistical reasons, are they statistically higher 
to get in a fatal accident than it is are for they... uh, contraceptives to fail. Well, we're not talking about a fatal accident. We're just talking about getting into an accident. No, we are hurt. talking about a fatal accident because we're talking about organs being um, organs being. Believe, even if you were guaranteed to get into an accident, just like you're like, let's say getting into an accident is synonymous with having sex. Cars have airbags. Cars have seatbelts. There are accident contraceptives, you could say, that prevent you from from getting hurt. Sometimes they fail. Sometimes they're not enough. Just like when you have sex. Uh, just like seatbelts don't always work, and just like airbags don't always work to keep you from getting hurt, um, condoms, birth control, implants, and um, the pullout method don't always work either. Uh, so the the worry is, the worry that I have um, in regards to making this illegal is that, one, I don't agree with it morally, and two, I don't even agree with it um, uh, practically. I don't think it's practical to outlaw abortion. I think all you're going to do is make abortions happen in an unhealthier, more unsafe environment, and you're going to end up having a lot of women end up getting hurt um, because of it, if we're talking about practicality. And morally, I don't think most people, maybe you are, but I don't think most people who are pro-life are willing to bite down on the philosophical bullet that we are okay with taking away a living person's bodily autonomy to keep another person alive, even if they are in part responsible for that other person being in a state where they have to be kept alive by another person. I don't think we're, I don't like the idea of the government telling me I have to be hooked up to an IV with this person. Send me to jail. Charge me for manslaughter. That's fine. Do not say that I have to be hooked up to an IV to a guy uh, to keep him alive like, because I got like into a driving you, accident. Like I said, when you when, when you gave me that uh, hypothetical, I, I offered that there was two choices, either go to jail um, for a minimum of manslaughter, a maximum of a murder, or be there for nine months to help this person get stable in the hospital. I mean, that is your option. Um, you either kill this person or you assist them through uh, uh, through the medical process of healing, which would take nine months according to the doctors in this hypothetical situation. Well, we're t and what we're talking about here in this hypothetical is you don't have the option to unhook. The government's saying no. You're sitting in a hospital all day. You don't have the option to unhook and then just accept the prison sentence you get given for committing a murder, I guess, in, in your view. You don't have the option. You're stuck in there for nine for nine months, right? I mean, you have um, the option, right? You can unhook yourself. You have the option. Um, just like you, Not, well, you just, just you like you would ha just like you most... would have you would have the option to get an abortion. Um, it well, would if be it's outlawed, it, it, then it it's out, I guess. If we want to make it super comparable, if it's outlawed and abortions are illegal, what would be a good comparison to getting the coat hanger in the back alley for unhooking yourself from the sky? Like, Yanking out an IV to... from your arm. Nah, that doesn't sound severe enough. It would have to be like, you. It would have to be like you have to take like a knife and you have to cut out a chunk of your of your flesh to get the IV out. Maybe that would be a little bit more comparable. Also, I think something that a lot of people uh, look past the fact that sex isn't a crime. Having sex and getting pregnant isn't a crime, but being responsible for killing someone in a car accident where it's your fault, like drunk driving, is a crime. You've done something morally wrong by getting into the car. So even by your logic, you are morally responsible for that person because you did an immoral action knowingly that you could have gotten like into a car accident and hurt somebody. But in the case of sex, well... That's not an immoral action, I wouldn't think, most of the time. I mean, there's times where sex is immoral, but, but you know, that, those, that, those are other situations, right? Right. So, I mean, you're arguing that uh, being drunk and driving is illegal. That's not the only time people get hooked up for manslaughter. Um, they get hooked up for manslaughter because um, they weren't paying attention to the road, or they, they looked away, and then they, they turned back, and it was too late. Um, so, I mean, we can conflate this argument if you'd well, like, that drunk driving is not the only time that people get arrested for manslaughter. Well, um, careful, because the, the, the law the law is really complicated. There are cases where you can get off of a case of murder, where you did commit murder. The thing about manslaughter, the reason manslaughter exists, as a punishment for negligence. Killing someone because of your negligence, not because of intent to kill. Um, so this would be like running over a jaywalker, right? That's why, like... Um, generally no one gets all that big in a huff about someone jaywalking across the street because it's still illegal to run over someone even if they're walking across the street and they're not supposed to. That would be manslaughter because out of your own like uh, uh, negligence, you've gotten someone killed, right? The, the Manslaughter is situations that aren't murder um, and aren't killing in self-defense or a case where it would be like morally permissible to kill someone, right? 
Yeah, I mean, so I mean, it's yeah, like I said, people get arrested for manslaughter all the time on the road. It's not just for drunk driving. Um, so to conflate just just simply drunk driving, saying drunk driving is illegal, um, to the, the manslaughter argument that I was making, um, is uh, definitely not one to one. Um, and it's it's just a tad bit disingenuous to compare the two. To, like drunk driving and uh, protected sex. To suggest that drunk driving is the only time on the road that someone's going to get arrested for manslaughter. Or the only oh, time, yeah, the only no. Time on the road no, drunk driving is just a good example. The reason why I use the drunk driving example is because a lot of people who are pro-life will say that you knew going into having sex that you could get pregnant. You knew that was a possibility. But in the case of, and just like in the case of drunk driving, while well, drunk driving is a crime and is morally wrong, the reason why I say it's comparable is because you, when you got into the car and you went to drive drunk, you knew there was a risk that you could get into a car accident. There was a Fairly good risk you get into a car accident. Probably higher than getting pregnant. Or you want being tired and driving. We can talk about that too. Where you know there's a risk when you're tired and driving. You know there's a risk that you're going to fall asleep on the way home. Um, and you decide to take that risk anyways. I mean, I think it's more a comparable one to one. But if you still mur if you still kill somebody while you're uh, tired and driving, you're still going to get hit up with manslaughter. Yeah. Do you think that's correct? Like, if you're like, I guess here's like a pretty defensible case of driving while tired like let's say you're a trucker and you've got like a uh, your your job is on the line you know you got to make this trip and you're just you you've you've been downing what, what's that uh drug that a lot of truckers take to stay awake i, I what it's no called. Idea. they take some drug it's like a it's like a prescription drug that a lot of truckers take and it keeps them awake for a long time they're like constant it's not crack no dose I, i'm pretty sure it's like a serious drug right like adderall or something um there, there's something that's like pretty similar to meth or Adderall, something that's like a big time upper that a lot of truckers take. Like this guy's taking as much of that as he can take, and um, he's he's just trying to make his trip. He winks for like half a second on the wheel and uh, ends up smashing another car into a barricade. Do you think that person is like should be morally and legally like answer those as two different se separate questions? Is that person morally? A, like has they have they done a moral wrong in killing that person that is worthy of punishment morally and legally have they done something wrong that they deserve punishment for legally and you're a perfect world where you wrote the law morally yes legally yes really yes so are you do you not believe that like intent matters uh when it comes to, like the moral a moral assessment of a person when we talk about intent if it was if if i would say this person intended to do this i would charge them with murder um, and unintentional, uh, would typically be underneath the eyes of the law, unintentional manslaughter. Well, yeah, legally, sure. And I, I guess we can agree legally, um, that's the case now, but in your perfect world and you, if you were the judge and you everything and you were the one slamming the gavel down, would you, um, want to send someone to prison for manslaughter because they fell asleep behind the wheel and they didn't mean to kill someone, but they did it. Would you think less of that person as a human being morally? And would you sentence them to prison? Morally, I would say that person made a mistake and that person needs to pay for the mistake they did. Uh, and illegally, yeah, they, they, they belong in prison for unintentional manslaughter, of course. Would you have a beer with that guy? Um, after he got out of jail, I don't think they're allowed to have beers in jail. Um, after he got out I mean, of jail, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be against having a relationship with this person, but I'm not against having a relationship with a lot of people that people the, typically the, would have relationships with. The reason why I asked the question is because when we talk about like moral condemnation of a person, we're usually talking about like, has this person done something wrong that reflects poorly on their character? Like if someone's a murderer like a serial killer, they purposely ran someone over on the road and you knew that, I, you probably wouldn't have a beer with that person. I wouldn't have a beer with that person. Like, what a piece of shit, right? Um, but in the case of um, of this, I, I wouldn't morally condemn that person. I'd be like, you were irresponsible and you made a mistake. And, and maybe there is some legal punishment that should come from that. Probably more reasonably, like a fine, like a settlement payment to the family or the person who was the victim of the accident if they survive. Um, that, that's somewhere where I don't necessarily agree someone ought to be sent to prison. I mean, especially practically speaking, like prison tends to pump out people who are bigger criminals than they were when they came in. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, uh, 
I, I definitely wouldn't talk agree about, with you there. Uh, prison the form, argument, we could talk argument. about prison for, reform if you'd like to. Um, but part of my moral argument is you make mistakes. And the mistakes you make, uh, you, you either get to... I mean, there, there's good mistakes, there's bad mistakes. I've mistakenly done stuff that were very good for me. Um, but you get to reap the benefits or the, um, or the consequences of your actions. Whatever actions you take, you're responsible for. Let's say I'm in a self-defense situation, right? So I'm in a self-defense situation. Someone's in my house and wants to murder me and my wife. All right. So I sh I just start firing rounds at him. Right. One of my rounds goes through my wall and hits a little kid walking across the sidewalk. I'm mm -hmm. responsible for that round. That round came from my weapon. I am responsible for where that round went and who it hit. So if I was in a self-defense situation um, and I did hit a person who was walking outside and killed them, yes, I would say that I should go to jail for manslaughter. Interesting. I think um, there's a difference between legal. So the thing about law is that we don't build our morals off of the law. We build a, We try to build the law off of our morals, right? That's where we try to be. Okay, Mr. M, I'm going to ban you if you keep asking me to tell you when life ends. Okay, no one no one agrees on that. Okay. Um, okay, can, can, I, can I take care of my chat really quick? Yeah, your chat's Sorry. probably freaking out too. My chat Tiff keeps asking me weird, weird questions. Tiffany? If you don't shut the fuck up, I'm going to time you out. And I have been in the military. Okay? So it's kind of unfair for you to say I've never had to fire my gun at another human being. So, I mean, play with that what you will. But if you don't shut up and stop trying to antagonize people, I'm going to time you out. Squad W. You know what you should do? This is what, I, what I've what i thought about doing. I, I've thought about pulling uh, one of my favorite streamers. His name is T-Hump. If people are pissing him off, he'll be like, all right, you got one minute to subscribe on Twitch. If you're not subbed in one minute, then uh, you're banned. That's the, that's the best thing to do. If someone pisses you off, that's the best way to do it. I think every streamer should start doing that. Fuck you. You've got one minute to subscribe or you're, or you're uh, like on Twitch, like with money. You've got one minute to subscribe or you're fucking banned. Get out of here. Um... This actually leads me to um, another interesting question. So we probably agree on self-defense, right? Like if someone is trying to hurt you or someone is trying to take something from you, like rob you, you've got the right to um, uh, to shoot that person or, or kill them with lethal force to protect yourself, right? Or your property. Yes. Yeah. And the reason, I mean, maybe your reasoning is different. I imagine it's the same. The reason why I'm okay with that is because this person is doing something that impedes on my rights and my bodily autonomy. You're coming into my property. You're coming into my home and you're trying to hurt me or my family or take away things that I own. You're on my property. I have the right to put a bullet in your head if you're trying to steal my shit, hurt me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we agree there are cases where people have the right to take away another person's life because they are impeding on another person's bodily autonomy. And I, I bring that argument over to the case of pregnancy. Um, if we, like, we can talk about comparisons here, but, like, being pregnant's no walk in the park. Like, listen, I take some big shits, all right? I need to make this very clear. The shits that I take, I one time took a shit so big that the, that one end, the end that came out first was at the bottom of the toilet, like, the little hole at the bottom that it goes through, and the other end, when I was done, like, came over the lip a little bit of the toilet, all right? And that, I don't think, is even comparable to the pain of giving birth or the nine months prior to that, usually, of, of pregnancy. Um, and I think this is a case where if somebody feels like they don't want to go through that process of having to carry a child for nine months, which is a pain in the dick on its own, and then having to give birth, which is like, God, can you imagine like ha having to take a massive shit and having to like dread that for nine months? Like, oh, it's going to be such a huge shit, you know? Like, that's awful. I can't imagine that. I'd say that action is impeding on the bodily autonomy of that pregnant woman enough so that they gain the right to decide whether or not they want to end their bodily autonomy being treaded on by another thing, another human so, being, I'll even say, in the case of the fetus. Here's the difference between self-defense and abortion. Um, self-defense, that person is already intruding on my right to life um, because I, if in order to use deadly force— you have to have a credible threat to your life or to a third person's life. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And so they're either intruding on my right to life or a third person's right to life. Um, and the, so the baby's intruding on your womb, whether they mean to or not, just like the truck but driver are, but that are, ran they, over that other car. Are they intruding the on the woman's right? Are they intruding on the woman's right to life? Um, yeah. No, in, they're, in not. Cases they're not. They're not yeah. the, Okay. In the in, cases in they the are, I've already, I've, already life, get, I've already. I've already. You believe that, that our rights are God given, right? You believe that our rights are God given? Yes. Our fundamental and rights by, are and, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These rights, I believe, absolutely coincide with the right for a woman to terminate a pregnancy if she feels her bodily autonomy is being treaded upon. You know, that's the whole idea, right? If you believe in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and another living thing is impeding on your rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, just like in the case of self-defense, you have the right to terminate the pregnancy, or you have the right to terminate another person's life, because they are um, by taking away your rights. Um, and maybe it may not be, I'm not saying the baby is wrong for this. I'm not saying the baby is comparable to a guy who's come into your house and, uh, is trying to steal your shit morally. I'm thinking it's more similar to the example, uh, that you agreed to of the trucker who accidentally, uh, runs over another car and kills that person. They didn't mean to do that. And yet you still think they have moral and, uh, legal consequences for that. Just like the baby who may not mean to be impeding on the life of the mother is still doing exactly that. Okay. Right. So with that being said, right, so there's there the baby is not intruding on the mother's right to life. Should the baby intrude on the mother's right to life, which is the highest right, um, it's the highest natural right. Um, so should the baby intrude on the mother's right to life? I've already made the argument at the very beginning that if it was a risk to the mother's health, that that would be a situation in which I could understand and why an abortion would be needed as a medical treatment. Um, I, I don't so, I don't know what country you're from, but I'm from America. The the most important rights are are equal: life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. God granted us those rights, right? Yes. God yeah. granted. I, us I don't those think rights. any. I don't think the right to life is any greater than the, light, the right to liberty or the pursuit of happiness. Liberty is nothing without life. Life is nothing without liberty, and life and liberty are nothing without the pursuit of happiness, right? I would disagree. I, I, would, I would think the right to life is is one of the highest rights. I think they're. I I, I do believe that they're ranked. Um, in which cases, because uh, then we go on a whole debate on well, you have the right, you have the right of property, and I have the right to life. Um, which which one should be um, taken away so that way the other one can have that right? Um, and so, with that being said, I think that the right to life would be ranked higher to that, and it's for that reason that I believe so. Um, but with the right to life. I've already made the concession at the very beginning, not even a concession, it's just my point, um, that if it is risking the mother's health, that the mother should be able to get an abortion. But if the infant is not risking the mother's health, then then the, the mom is intruding on the baby's right to life. Well, now I you're kind of getting down, now you're kind of falling into a trap that if I was like... If I want to be like a big dickhead, I could pull, I could start pointing to masks, right? Why do you think it's bad for the government to mandate masks then? Because I, I know you're probably against the government mandating masks, right? Um, with like some federal law where it's illegal now to not wear a mask because, mm -hmm. hey, you're putting the lives of others in danger. You're taking away their right to life by not by not putting on the piece of cloth in your face. Or um, uh, there was someone, another better example that someone brought up. Uh, um, uh, uh, food and clothing and shelter. Asterisk People need food, toilet, clothing, and shelter to survive. And um, sorry, someone donated and TTS asterisk. is talking. There we go. Um, you, you could make the same argument that the government or millionaires or billionaires who have tons of money, um, who keep that money... Uh, are are implicit in the deaths and the suffering of people who are starving and people who don't have shelter or home, and they ought to be morally impugned for that. That's like an argument a socialist would make. Okay, give me one second. Um, Tiffany, that's it. Um, I'm timing you out um, for the rest of the day. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, telling me I don't care about babies unless they're white. Um Let's see. How, how, how many minutes is, uh, let's see, eight hours. Eight hours and minutes. Now just ban them permanently and tell them if they want to come back, they have to sub. <laughs> eight, Make four, them PayPal you $5. 480 minutes. All right. Sorry. Um, I had to take care of that. All right. 400. Okay. So I t untime you out and then time you out again. Okay. Oh, four. by the way, uh, Tiffany, if you're one of my fans or any of my fans that try to raid Sproticus's stream, go fuck yourself. You're not part of my community. Hey, Sproticus, if you see anybody who's from my community raiding you, uh, send me in Discord their um, their names and everything, and I'll I'll eat them.
Okay. All right. I just I just didn't want that person in my chat for the rest of the night. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want anybody rating anybody else that I uh, debate. So, uh, there she is right there, Tiffany Star, um, in your oh, Twitch. Shit. I'm sorry, Tiffany Star. You're catching a ban. I'll give you. A, I'm gonna give you a one day, okay? Because I, I know you didn't. You, you didn't. It was before my warning, but don't do that shit again. All right? Don't do that shit again. That's a one day ban. I'm sorry, but that was. I'm not allowing my community to do brigading. Okay? That's against the rules. I'm sorry. I like you, but sorry. Um, yeah, but the 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 argument that um you're taking away the baby's right to life, and that's the greatest li uh, right, then you could go down all sorts of slopes with that. We could talk about um, the ca the cases where, uh, with like uh, millionaires or billionaires who have tons of money, or the government that has tons of money and could easily um, provide food, shelter, and other necessities to live to poor people in this country, and yet they don't. Okay, and so we're, we're talking about the idea of a direct violation of the right to life and an indirect violation of the right to life. Um, direct and direct and indirect have no have no connection to intention and non-intentional. Um, as much as people might think that inten intentional um, would, al would almost always no intentional would always be a direct violation of the right to life. Unintentional can be a direct or indirect violation of the right to life. Um, I make so the same when, you case have a, the when you have a direct violation of the right to life, um, it's much different than when you have an indirect violation of the right to life, such as not wearing a mask um, is very much so an indirect violation of the right to life. Um, and you, I, I don't I don't even think it's a violation at that point, because most of the time we talk about violations of the right to life, we talk about direct violations. We never bring up indirect violations because we know that how deep the rabbit hole would go if you start bringing up indirect violations of the right to life. Because what if I have the flu and I go to the supermarket, I give someone the flu and they're dying from that flu. Um, how, how was I supposed to know that they were going to die for that flu if I went to that supermarket at that amount of time? I wouldn't have ever known that. Um, and with direct violations of right, of the right to life um you you know what risk you're taking when you do the action sure so the problem with this is that it's a slippery slope as i said and i know the slippery slope is usually viewed as a fallacy but we're talking about practicality in regards to law right so the argument that you're making is that if the woman gets an abortion then she is taking away the baby's right to life. I would argue the baby's necessity to exist inside of the mother is taking away her right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You may think that life is the most important right, but I mean, I'm an American. I think all I think all three of them rights right there, First Amendment, I think they're the goddamn most important. I'm American, goddammit. Um, I'm from Florida, all right? I, I'm from God's country. Um, like I, I don't see any of those rights as being greater than the other. I mean, I'm maybe this is a conservative idea, but I think life is nothing without the rights to pursuit of happiness and liberty. And I think liberty is nothing without life or, um, you need all three really. And I think if, um, we have a country where you're not allowed to, um, terminate a pregnancy where your rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are being impeded upon, um, I feel like it's unconstitutional. I don't like that. I'm American. I'm, I love the constitution. Another time out. All right. Um, sorry, my chat's going nuts, and I'm having to time out. People left the bread, I guess. Um, so I, I think, like, and I, I think that's just where our fundamental disagreement is going to be, and it is doing? that I believe that there's an order asterisk of right, though, an order of these uh, natural rights, and you don't believe there's an order of these natural rights. Um, and I think asterisk. I think that's going to be where we fundamentally disagree, where I think the um right of life um goes above the right of uh, pursuit of happiness. Um, it, I just, I agree. I agree with that. I, I don't know how you could disagree with that. Assuming that if someone's right, if someone's right to pursuit of happiness was going to take away someone else's, uh, right to life, you would, you would roll with the right to pursuit of happiness over the right to life. Um, yeah, probably. I think that, um, if somebody's existence and somebody's actions are impeding on someone else's, uh, rights, then yeah. Um, I don't put any right over another. I think like, you know, whenever you're you break into somebody's house, um, right, uh, and you're trying to rob them. I know this is a a um, you know actively being done intentionally, but if you break into someone's house to rob them and you've got no intent to kill them, even if the person whose whose house is being robbed knows this person is going to kill them or hurt them or their family, they're just stealing some of their stuff, like some fancy jewelry or something that they can sell at a like a pawn shop to make money. Um, they're stealing their property. They're stealing from their their liberty and their right to own things and have a reasonable expectation that it won't be stolen. And I think that person still has the right to to kill that other person and take away their right to life because they're taking away 
another right to, uh, for that other person that is not their right to life. It's like rock, paper, scissors a little bit, only it goes all ways around, depending on who's the perpetrator of what, I think. Okay. And I, I just think that's where our fundamental disagreement is going to be. I think I think that's I think past this we're going to go through um, a circular argument, um, and we're just going to keep going in circles past this point. I think we've had a good yeah. discussion up to this point, but I think that's just where our fundamental disagreement is going to be. Yeah, it's a very esoteric argument, and it's extremely philosophical. And everybody hates philosophy. Anyone who says they like it is lying. So, do you want to like um, do you want to do the LGBT stuff because that's a little like yeah. more concrete? Yeah, I'll go ahead and have you start. Um, that way, I'm not just making making random claims to see which one you disagree with. Um, uh. Oh, great! I get to time out someone else. This is great.